Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner and this is Saturday, January 18th and we are tracking the winter weather that is headed toward the south, headed toward southeast Texas and the latest on the temperatures you can see that the initial front that we've been talking about that's already moved through. We've got teens along the Canadian border and you can see it warms up a little bit but that's where the real cold areas you can just see the shape of that arching down toward us and here's the water vapor image another way of looking at that trough digging in you can see the uh, different areas of uh, moisture and that is all headed this way Jeff that front made it through this morning but this is just the initial cool down we are waiting for the really cold air coming tomorrow yeah, the secondary push of cold air, and, and I don't want to disregard this first push because we are now looking at freezing conditions yep. for tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, all the way down to the north and west sides of the metro area. So this is really the last day to get out there and make those preparations before this real cold air comes in. And then we have the uh, real cold air come in Sunday night into Monday morning. These are the forecast low temperatures for Monday morning, January the 20th. This will be clear and, and, and cold. There's not going to be any precipitation Sunday night, Monday morning, but it is going to be cold. We're talking hard freeze now for the northern areas, uh, 24, two hours or below, north of 105. Won't totally rule that out west of Houston, too. Austin County, out the Colorado County, and then even into the mid-20s now across Harris County, mid to the upper 20s in Harris County, and even down to the beaches here, you know, 30, 29, 30 degrees down here on the beaches so very cold on monday morning i don't think we're going to warm up a whole lot on monday the clouds are going to start coming in if we make 40 degrees i think we'll be struggling to do that we could end up in the mid to upper 30s for high temperatures on monday and that's when we go into the ice box as we get into monday night and tuesday these are the low temperatures on tuesday morning actually a degree or two warmer and this is because of yeah. the clouds and all the precipitation that's going to be coming in now on Monday night and Tuesday, and we'll talk about the precipitation in a minute. But what I really wanted to make sure that we focus on and everybody is really understanding is once we get that precipitation on the ground and the clouds clear out Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, uh, the temperatures are really going to fall. And we're now talking upper teens all the way down to Harris County, even mm -hmm. down into the coastal counties, inland areas of Matagorda County, Brazoria County, Western Harris, Northern Harris, and even inside the, the loop, inside the city, inside the urban areas, uh, we're talking low 20s. Um, so this is this is well below the level that we get concerned about with hard freeze and pipes and all that. So you really are going to have to take those precautions out there to make sure we, we try to reduce any damage to pipes and stuff like that. You know, open cabinet doors, put as much heat against the walls as you possibly can. And this is for... Uh, Wednesday morning. So this is three nights in a row, three to four nights in a row that we're going to have uh, sub-freezing or freezing temperatures over the area. All right. Now the, the million dollar question everybody wants to know is, is it going to snow? Yep. And we do have a winter storm coming in. We have fairly high confidence that we are going to get precipitation with this event, really starting Monday, late afternoon, early evening, six, seven o'clock, and then going through the day on Tuesday. And so most of Monday is going to be fine. Tuesday is not going to be okay. Um, and we still have some issues that we're trying to resolve as to what kind of precipitation we're gonna see. Is it gonna be freezing rain? Is it gonna be sleet? Is it gonna be more snow? And all three of those are possible. You know, kind of looking at some of the stuff this morning, we're still just outside of our high resolution guidance. We'll be getting some of that in today. Um, but kind of looking at some stuff this morning, the soundings are a little bit warmer south of I-10. And so we may see a little bit more freezing rain and sleep to start in those areas, a little bit more ice south of I-10 down toward the coast. Then they're a little bit cooler to the north of I-10. And so we may end up with a little more snow. We may, we may start as a little bit of freezing rain and sleep, quickly transition over to snow. And so our accumulations go up a little bit more the further north you get. And this is the current forecast for accumulation. This is not a model. This yep. is the actual forecast for accumulation through 6 a.m. on Tuesday. And you can see about an inch or two north of I-10, uh, higher totals the further north and east you go. And we will have more snow on top of this during the day on Tuesday. And so we'll be updating this as we go through the day today. The other thing I did want to touch on is the ice potential. Uh, while it is low down to the southwest, so we're talking Sugarland 
Angleton, Southwest, Bay City, uh, down towards Victoria, Wharton, and then out west towards San Antonio and Austin. While it's low, it is there, and it does not take a lot of ice to produce issues. You know, you're talking a hundredth of an inch or so, it's like a paper thin layer of ice, and that's all it takes to create issues on some of these bridges and overpasses. And and one thing with with the with the intensity of the cold we're going to see Monday night and Tuesday, temperatures down in the mid upper twenties. You're even going to have issues on the surface streets. We are going to have accumulation on the surface streets. And then it's when are we going to try to kind of pull out of this? The precipitation ends as we get into Tuesday afternoon and evening, but it's going to be a very slow warm up. And so I don't think we're going to pull out of this much on Wednesday. I think we're going to have a lot of travel issues still on Wednesday. A lot of this is going to be determined how much precipitation falls, how much snow and ice is on the ground because that's going to prevent those temperatures from warming up very much. Um, and so this is the, the impact, the winter storm severity impact. And as you can see, this is for minor impacts. So this is for roadways and driving and stuff like that. And you can see across a lot of Texas, from the I-35 corridor all over into Louisiana, including much of Southeast Texas, we have at least a 50 to 80, 90% chance of winter storm impacts here across our area. So this this is going to be an impactful, disruptive winter storm with respect to travel as we get into Monday afternoon, evening, late afternoon and evening, and then all the way into Wednesday, potentially even into Thursday morning, we could still have some issues on some of the bridges and overpasses. As far as power goes right now, as long as we can keep this more in the sleet snow criterion realm, we won't have a lot of issues with the power, but if we were to get a little bit more freezing rain that kind of glazes and coats everything, yeah. that's when the potential for uh, power outages might go up a little bit. But right now we think any power outages would be localized and isolated uh, for, from anything going on with just the weather locally. You know, we, we're talking block or street or something like that, but not widespread issues right now as, as, as the current forecast holds right now. The, the next couple of, you know, 12 to 36 hours is really when this is going to firm up. The other thing I'll mention is we're seeing this in the global models. Um, we are seeing some very uh, pronounced banding features in the global models, especially uh, as we get into Tuesday morning between about 6 a.m. Tuesday and noon, 2 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. And those banding features, we've seen this before back in the big snowstorm in 2004 down on the Texas coast. When you get those banding features setting up and there's some instability aloft and a lot of lift, you can really get some snow. And so yeah. I, I think for some locations north of I-10, um, these totals potentially are going to be locally higher amounts. It would not at all surprise me if somebody got a half a foot of snow or eight inches of snow out of this somewhere kind of north and east of the metro and then on over to Louisiana. Um, and, and if you look at the snow potential in Louisiana, we're talking forecasted amounts now of six to up to eight inches north of Lake Charles. And so this wow. is, um, you know, this is not something we see very often around here, even an inch or two of snow. This is almost a generational type snow event potentially yeah. coming for portions of the southern United States. And it's not just southeast Texas. We're talking snow all the way along the Gulf Coast up to the southeast United States this week. So lots of travel issues in the southern United States with this winter storm. Yeah, it's uh, almost like you know, you're talking about banding and things like that, Jeff. It's almost like we're talking about lake effect snow here in southeast Texas. But uh, uh, yeah, like you said, you said it very, very accurately. This is generational type snow. Reminds me of the 70s being in Houston. And uh, I think that was the last time you could build a snowman. So we're talking about that kind of snow. But uh, at the same time, got to be safe. Could get some ice under there. And, and uh, like Jeff mentioned, we're getting... Uh, closer to the event, so the models will continue to adjust as they always do, but uh, they're getting more accurate as we get closer to events. What we're telling you now is more likely. So as the models adjust, so with the forecast, you can keep it right here to get the latest briefings, whether inside the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Also, check out our Weather Insights blog if you prefer to read. Jeff, thank you very much.